In this video, we'll be creating two pieces of content. I'll show you where to get these free modern backgrounds, how to import Adobe fonts, how to use the golden ratio to size your type properly. We'll also create a call to action button and an image clipping mask. And I'll show you how to duplicate your artboard, swap out the image inside of the clipping mask. Then we'll export both of these pieces for social content. Just a quick note before we get started, this process can be used for any type of social static content, whether it be Instagram or Facebook ads, posts, stories, reels, t static TikTok content, Snapchat content, LinkedIn, uh, whatever. Feel free to mix and match however you need it to be. And if you're not creating an ad, if you're just creating a regular content, um, you might want to take off the call to action button. It's up to you. Play with it how you see fit. And remember to get your free backgrounds in the description. All right, I'm going to make a new document. We are start starting with a portrait post for Instagram. So 1080 by 1350. Keep it 72 PPI. And now I want to import a background. So I'm going to go to File Place and go through these backgrounds I made. These are all free. I'll put a link in the description. Grab them now. So I'm placing this one, just dragging it in there, placing it there. And you know what? I don't want that blue on the left. I want the blue on the right. So I'm going to reflect vertical, hit OK. And now the, the blue part's on the right. OK, now let's, all right, let's add some type. Here's the headline. So this will be the largest thing, largest type people see on this. And I'm going to go to fonts.adobe.com and I want this font good times. You could go ahead and click add family or you could add each individual one separately. So if you just want the bold or if you just want the regular type, you could add one. I just added the whole thing, the whole family. And that will go in, be synced to Adobe Illustrator, all your Adobe products. So there we go. We have Good Times fonts in here. And I want to change it to white. Okay, now let's just duplicate that and make our subheading. Now, this is a really interesting trick. This is the golden ratio. So I'm taking my headline that's 80, dividing it by 1.618, and it creates the perfect subheading size based on the headline. So you don't have, it eliminates the guesswork of, of trying to make this look perfect. Um, using the golden ratio, it's amazing. I learned that and I, I have not, not done it since. So now we're gonna make a, like a short sentence, um, this is, again, this is depending on what your ad's gonna be. You might want this, you might not want this. I did the golden ratio again, divided my subheading size by 1.618 to get this. And now since this, this font is a little, oh, it's spaced out too much, um, and I'm gonna change it to Gibson, something a little bit more easier to read uh, when it's, when it's sh smaller. Uh, so that looks good. I'm just going to reposition this to make this look a little better. All right. That looks good. Okay, now I'm going to make a call to action button. So I'm using a sub headline, subheading, heading. And again, I'm changing it to a Gibson bold. That looks good. Now this could be link in bio, this could be read caption, this could be learn more. Um, it's not actually a button people are going to click, but it shows that call to action button that people are familiar with and just looks pretty visually appealing. Okay, we need, we need this type above the, the button, so go ahead and drag that above it in layers. And I'm going to center this inside of the button and make these corners rounded. 
Actually, it's not centered. You gotta, you have to center the paragraph to get that centered here. There we go. There we go, center that. Now select them both, hit a line center. I'm gonna pump it up a little bit. That looks good. And for this one, I'm gonna use that background color so it looks like the, the blue button is kind of like showing through to the pink. Again, use whatever colors you want, your color palettes. If you have branding guidelines, you have to stick by your, your branding colors. Uh, these are all just for example. And now, since this is a portrait post in Instagram, it's not a square. So Instagram in the feed, it will cut off the top 135 pixels and the bottom 135 pixels. So I hit control R to get my ruler up there and you, you could drag down from the ruler to make a guide. Now, I, I automatically had guides locked, but you might want to lock your guides so you're not accidentally moving them. This is just so when your post is displayed in your feed, nothing is cut off. So when people are going through your feed and they click on it, they'll see the whole entire portrait post. But when they're looking at your feed posts, your whole grid of, feed, of, of posts, nothing will be cut off in, in this post. Okay, so now I'm going to add like a, a, a focal image here. This could be your product photo. It could be your lifestyle photo of people. I uh, added a circle and I'm going to create a clipping mask, but here I'm going to add this picture of this ice cream and create a clipping mask. So this will create that circle around it and you select both and cl click create clipping mask and nope, the one, the, uh, your path has to be on top. So I'll rearrange those. Now click make clipping path, path with both selected and there you go, you have a clipping path and you can reposition it there. So click on just that image in the group and now you can resize it, you can move it around. If you click on both of them, you can move around both. So I'm just getting that ice cream in the frame here, in the artboard. And repositioning this a little bit more, make it look perfect. All right. So now that's that's in the the guides there, so people can still see the ice cream in your feed. So nothing will be chopped off. Okay, so now let's create let's create a story or a real static post. So I'm just duplicating this whole entire artboard. And now you click anything in the other artboard and then double click on your art your artboard icon, and it'll bring up the dimensions for that specific one. So I'm changing it to 1080 by 1920. And let's just move up this background so it's all in the artboard there. There we go. I'm gonna lock that background so I'm not moving it around, trying to, when I'm moving around other items. And now I'll just reposition everything to make it look good and spaced out for a reel or story or a, a, a TikTok post, um, just that, that portrait. And now I will replace that image. I clicked on just the image and then go to your links panel and, and swap out the link. So it's so much easier than having to redo the circle all over again. And now I don't need to stay within those guide borders, so I'll move those up a little bit. You don't want to go to the very top and the very bottom, but still stay, stay somewhere in the middle there. Make sure this is all good. Okay, and now this is exactly what it's going to look like when I export. So these look good. Let's export as and I'm going to create a new folder here just for my own organizational purposes and use our boards. Make sure all is clicked to export all of your art boards. Make sure art is optimized. Screen 72 PPI and export. All right.
Let's make sure these look good. And there are our two exports. Looks pretty good. And that looks pretty good. Nice. We made that in 10 minutes.